Senna first got famous as part of a troubled musical duo. As a single artist, he became one of the biggest acts in the world and one of the most famous pop stars of the 1980s. Tina Turner, an early rock and roll star who became a huge pop star in the 1980s, died after a long illness at the age of 83. In the past few years, she had been sick. In 2016, she was identified with intestinal cancer. And in 2017, she had a kidney transplant. Turner confirmed and emphasized the role that black women played in making rock and roll what it is today. She helped define that era of music so much that Mick Jagger said that his stage image was influenced by her high kicking. Energetic live performances. After working for 20 years with her abusive husband Ike Turner, she went out on her own. After a few false starts, she made the record Private Dancer, which made her one of the most famous pop stars of the 1980s. Her life was written about in three autobiographies, a biopic, a jukebox musical, and the praise documentary film Tina, which will come out in 2021. Her publicist, Bernard Doherty, said in a statement on Wednesday night, Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll, died peacefully today at the age of 83 after a long illness in her home in Kuznet, Switzerland, near Zurich. The world loses a singing legend and a role model when she dies. In 2018, scholar Daphne A. Brooks wrote in The Guardian, Turner's music has always been a charged mix of mystery, light melancholy, and a fierce vitality that often flirted with danger. Turner was born Anna May Bullock on November 26, 1939. She grew up in Nutbush, Tennessee, and as a child. She remembered picking cotton with her family. She sang in the church choir of a small town, and when she was a girl, she talked her way into Ike's band in St. Louis by singing. He had turned down her request to join until he saw her grab the microphone during a Kings of Rhythm show and sing BB Kings, You Know I Love You. I gave her the name Tina Turner after he heard how good her voice was. He also trademarked the name in case she left him and he wanted to replace her. He became mean very quickly. When Turner tried to leave the group early on because she knew how unpredictable he was. He hit her with a shoe walker. Turner wrote in her 2018 book My Love Story, my relationship with Ike was over the day he realized I was going to make him money. He had to have financial and mental control over me so I could never leave him. A Fool in Love, a song by Ike and Tina Turner, was her first recording under the name. It broke into the US Top 30 in July 1960 and was the start of a string of decent chart success. But it was when they played live that they became a big deal. Ike took the Ike and Tina Turner review on a lot of tours on the Chitlin' circuit. They were so popular that they even played in front of mixed race crowds. In 1964, they signed with Warner Brothers subsidiary Loma Records, which put out Fly. The Ike Tina Turner show, their first album to make the charts. In the second half of the 1960s, many of Rock's biggest stars wanted to work with the team. Phil Spector made the 1966 song River Deep, Mountain High. They opened for the Rolling Stones in the UK and later in the US. David Bowie, Sly Stone, Cher, Elvis Presley, and Elton John all came to their Las Vegas residency. In the 1970s, they were hit on the charts and won a Grammy. This lasted until 1976, when Turner left Ike because he was always angry and unfaithful. Baby, Get It On was her last song with the group. It was from the 1975 movie version of the Who's Rock Opera Tommy, in which she played Acid Queen, the same name as her second solo album. Turner's divorce was finalized in 1978. She got two cars and the right to use her stage name. I fought a little bit because he knew what I would do with it. She said in the film Tina, Turner had already put out two solo albums, but she kept going with her solo career. It took her until 1984's Private Dancer to change her image from that of a shimming rock and roller to that of a powerful. Mullet wearing, leather clad pop icon, which helped her avoid being put on the oldie circuit too soon. In the film Tina, she said that Private Dancer was her first album. She said, I don't think of it as a comeback. Tina never got there. Turner said that Buddhism, especially the practice of singing, changed her life for the better in the 1980s. Outside of music, 
She was in the 1985 movie Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, which Mel Gibson also appeared in. In 1986, she wrote her first book, I, Tina, which became a worldwide bestseller. It was later turned into the 1993 movie What's Love Got To Do With It, which starred Angela Bassett as Turner. She sang the theme song for the James Bond movie Goldeneye in 1995. Turner said she was retiring in 2000, a year after her last solo record. 24-7, came out. However, she came back to the stage in 2008 to perform with Beyoncé at the Grammys and for a final tour to mark the 50th anniversary of her career. That was the end, no doubt about it. In 2019, she told the New York Times, I was just tired of singing and making everyone happy. That's all I'd ever done in my whole life. Turner and Felida Lloyd worked together on the musical Tina, which opened in 2018 and won Olivier and Tony Awards for its West End and Broadway runs. Turner said of the show, This musical is not about my fame. It's about what I did to get there. Every night, I want people to leave the theater with the idea that you can make poison into medicine. Turner often said that she didn't like that invincible image that people had of her. She told the New York Times, I don't always want to be a strong person. My life was terrible. I just kept going. You just keep going and hope that something will come. In 2020, the Norwegian producer Kaigo remixed the 1984 hit, What's Love Got To Do With It? This made Turner the first singer to have a UK Top 40 hit in each of the last seven decades. She was inducted as a single artist into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021, 30 years after I Can Tina Turner World. Turner's second husband, German music executive Owen Bock, is the only person she leaves behind. After 27 years of dating, they got married in July 2013 and moved to Switzerland. Turner gave up her US citizenship in 2013 and became a Swiss citizen instead. Craig Raymond Turner, her first child, died in July 2018. Last year, after her other son Ronnie died at age 62, Turner said that he left the world far too soon. Ike Turner Jr. and Michael Turner, two of Ike Turner's boys whom she raised, are all that are left of her. Turner told The Guardian in 2020 that the last 10 years of her life had been her idea of happiness. Even though she had been sick a lot, the only way to be truly happy and keep it for a long time is to have an unshakable, hopeful spirit that can shine no matter what, she said. That's what I've done, and my biggest wish is to help other people do the same.